All right, so I am working on my 2003 Chevy 3500 with the Duramax 6.6 LB7. Um, basically, what I'm having is a uh, check engine light. I think it's P0401 and P101 or something like that. Um, I'll put it in the comments below. But uh, basically, what's happening is the EGR valve is saying that the performance, there's a performance issue there. Um, and then after a while, it'll actually make the map sensor uh, flip as well. Uh, map sensor is new, EGR valve is new. So the other symptom that I was having after kind of going through the whole truck is that I noticed that when I turn on the heat and, and air conditioning, sometimes it wouldn't work. It wouldn't start blowing. Uh, and it wouldn't change from, you know, face on to feet to defroster or whatnot. So I started thinking it was probably the vacuum line. Um, pretty hard to find information online about this, so I figured I'd do a quick video. Basically, if you did want to check your vacuum to make sure that it's working properly, you'll see there are two vacuum uh, lines down there. Hopefully you can see that here in the video. Way down there. I just focused on them. The top one uh, goes to the EGR, or I'm sorry, the top one, I believe the top one goes to the EGR, and then the bottom one, never mind. Bottom one goes to the EGR, top one goes to the pump. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but you can swap those and figure it out easy enough. Basically, you pull one of those, the one that goes to the pump down below, which I've taken out the fender well here, and taken out the pump, it usually goes right there. Um, basically, I pulled that and, and saw if it was pulling any vacuum, and it wasn't. So I figured there's a problem with the pump. It also made a bunch of noise. But when I pulled it out, what's interesting, Here's the pump. Look at this line. I mean, that thing has clearly been bent like that for a while. I can't even bend it back. So I'm guessing I don't even need a new pump. I think I may be all right with this one. I'm probably gonna go ahead and replace this vacuum line. Kind of pissed that I took it out, but it's hard to access. I would have never even seen that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off, replace it, put this pump back on. Start it up and see if there's any vacuum up top. So just wanted to give you a heads up to keep an eye out for that. But basically, if this isn't the issue, then I'll have to pull the pump back out. Um, and then I'll replace the pump and I'll let you know how that goes. So either way, uh, I'll keep you posted here and hopefully this helps you. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to test here. So I pulled the hose. And uh, the hose didn't let much air through, so I was worried maybe, you know, pumping against it, maybe it did some damage, but I think I can test this by holding my finger over uh, the nipple here. It does make some weird noise, which I'm not crazy about, but I'm not going to spend 150 bucks on a pump just to get rid of a noise. Uh, so basically what I'll do here is I'm going to go ahead and hold this down, I'm going to twist this, pulley and I'm going to see if it holds pressure. So I'm holding my finger over it. Yep, so it still held that pressure. I mean that, that has to be a good thing. Hold it. Maybe wait 10 seconds, see if it still holds the pressure. I want to make sure there's no leaks in the diaphragm in there because that would probably be bad. Yep, okay. So that tells me this thing's probably functioning properly, although it does squeak. So yeah, I think I, I have a decent diaphragm. I think I'm gonna hold on to this thing and put it back in and see how we do. Alrighty, uh, so basically I've already gotten everything back together. As you can see, the new vacuum hose is on there. Everything's good. Um, Went for a drive. I mean, I tested vacuum and everything's perfect, so that's good. I now, I now have vacuum. Uh, I went for a drive thinking that I fixed my problem, and sure enough, I didn't. Uh, I still have the same EGR code, P0404. Um, so basically, a couple of things I want to show you here. Uh, one, I want you to know right there, that is the line. This one, if you can see my finger, this one here is the line that comes from the pump. The one down below that's newer is the one that goes to the EGR. So I've replaced the one to the EGR. 
and I've replaced part of the one that goes up top. If I ever feel that the one that goes up top to here from the pump is bad, I can replace that pretty easily, but the other one needed to be replaced. So, with that being said, I basically know that the EGR valve was replaced uh, maybe a year ago, but only 500 miles have been put on this engine, if that. Um, so, what that tells me is that there's something else going on. Uh, it's not the EGR, it's not the vacuum lines. Uh, so I did a little bit more research and I found this little guy. So this little guy, he sits in here, down in this hole. I don't know if you can see the bolt hole for it. Uh, right about there. It's hard to see, but the bolt hole is right about there. So basically this sits there and what it does is it regulates how much air actually escapes through so that it can open and close the EGR valve. It's the only other thing that I can think could be causing the issue. Um, if you're looking for routing instructions on this vacuum, I'll probably make a separate video because I, it was very hard to figure this all out on my own. Uh, so check another video that I post here shortly. I'll post that so that you can see how all of this goes together. Um, but basically this thing here has one, I believe it's this side, comes from uh, the vacuum pump directly. Uh, there's then a T off, you see that here. So we have the T that goes down and that goes to this. And then the other side of the T comes up here and goes into this guy. Uh, but then the other side basically comes out of this thing, this side, and it goes over to here where I have this new hose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace this. I'm then gonna run the engine a bit and see if I can get my monitors to clear on my computer to show all green so that I can get this thing smogged. As you can see, I am a California truck in California that needs to be smogged. So sucks to be me, but at the same time, hopefully I can get this thing fixed and help you along the way. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in and we'll, we'll touch base here in a second. All right, we are all green. So that was the problem. I would imagine it was partly due to that uh, vacuum line that was like 90 degrees and pinched. Um, and then of course, maybe that damaged the solenoid, who knows, but uh, yeah, pretty exciting. Let me see if I can get you the uh, part number here. So this was the solenoid. I got it through O'Reilly's. There you go. Um, and yeah, one more time, I'll walk you through real quick what we did. So basically I had that P404 or P0404 code for the EGR open. Um, so I went ahead and checked if I had vacuum. I used this hose to check if I had vacuum right here. This guy that I have my finger on. I then found that I had no vacuum, so I went and pulled out the fender and the skid plate, took out that bad boy. I found that this right here, this guy, had a big um, bend in it, which was restricting airflow. Found that the pump was still good, so then I replaced that hose. I was then getting vacuum, which was good. Uh, I then tested it and it didn't solve the problem. Um, I then made sure to replace this guy. This is the solenoid. And hopefully you can get a nice view of that. I know it's a pain, but when I'm looking at videos, I always like people to show like clear pictures of everything around it so that you understand exactly what you're dealing with. Um, but yeah, that was it. So hopefully that helped you out, and hopefully you got rid of your P0404 code, or the map sensor code, um, or even the uh, barometric pressure code. That's another one that popped up when I had the vacuum lines reversed. So again... I'm going to make another video just going through the vacuum setup so that you can see it. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Best of luck.